talk to you about obscure programming languages that can make you money. So we all know Python, we know about Java, we all know about JavaScript. They're like the three biggest languages out there. But there are a few other uh, programming languages that I'm sure you probably haven't heard of that you can actually get jobs in. They're not just some obscure, weird framework someone created just for fun, but something that's actually applicable and can get you well-paid jobs. And if you follow me, check out my other video as well. You can see I follow a bit of, of an obscure path with the languages I learned uh, over the past few years. All right, let's get started with the list. At number five, we have Elixir. Some of you may have heard of this one. It's a functional programming language, really great at concurrency and builds on top of Erlang, a language from the 1980s, which was written by some telecommunications company. Well, where it shines is in networking and concurrency and things like that. There are a few jobs out there for Elixir so it's definitely gonna bag you some money if that's what you're looking for and it's obscure enough to make it on this list. So the pros and cons of Elixir. Well, it has fantastic fault tolerance. And I think this is because it's built by um, a telecommunications company. And the whole idea is you want that uptime, you know, constant uptime. So yeah, fault tolerance is pretty important for these types of things, for networking and so on. And so it's great at IO, it's great at concurrency, and these are all important for networking. Where it falls down is that it's a functional programming language and not many people know how to program in functional programming languages. Um, and I'm gonna say that's a bit of a con. And for our list of like, you know, obscure languages that actually make you money, Elixir is still just a little bit rare out there. There are jobs out there, but it's not the most common language. However, there are great learning materials for it. And I mean, if you're into functional programming, I suggest checking it out. Anyways, it's a curious language. Go check it out if you're interested. And it's number five on our list. All right, number four on our list. So obscure that I think a lot of you will not have heard of it. Is Programming Language 1, PL1, or PLI as some people call it. It's a procedural programming language and it is extremely old. It's from the 1970s or 60s. It's used mainly in mainframe systems and it was basically like the precursor to C programming actually. It works in a lot of different situations so you can use it for scientific reasons or for you know business applications, lots of different applications. And back in the 60s and 70s this was a pretty important thing because you had uh, other programming languages that I will mention next in the list that were aimed more at business use and ones that were aimed more at scientific use and PL1 could kind of do it all nearly for its time. The pros are that it's used by a lot of big banks, a lot of uh, big corporations still, and you can definitely land some very, very good, interesting jobs in PL1, and they will pay. <laughs> Uh, the point of our list. So as long as there's mainframes, there will be PL1, I believe. It's hard to find anyone that still does it. All of the programmers that used to program in it are now retired or about to retire. So there is a new young cohort of uh, mainframers out there, but hard to just go on Stack Overflow and throw in a question about PL1. It's you, you might not get a response. And that brings us to number three on the list, which is COBOL. COBOL is also used on the mainframes. So COBOL is a compiled programming language written for business applications. So the great thing about this one is all the banks and corporations and a lot of governments still use this one in a major way. A lot of their accounting and, and processes are written using COBOL. So you're you're pretty much guaranteed to get a job with this one and a well-paid one at that. In terms of mainframe languages, it's uh, pretty straightforward and it doesn't have too much complexity. I mean, it's still complex. It's still a mainframe language. It's still very dated, but it's it's uh, much easier to read and use than, than a lot of other languages out there. The downsides are you will be stuck on the mainframe with this one. You're not going to be moving away from that. It's very dated. I mean, you're going to be probably just maintaining old programs more than anything else if you do write stuff in this. Finally, it's just for business applications. If you want to be writing the fancy new tech, once again, this is not the language to be doing it in. This is if you just want to get paid. <laughs> you learn COBOL. Because all of the people that were doing COBOL recently, they're all retired. They're all in their 60s and 70s. They've hit retirement. They're sitting on all the money they made from programming in COBOL. And now it's time for some newer, younger generation to learn it. And I mean, go just look at, just look up jobs in COBOL. There's lots of them out there. Number two is Go. Golang. So Golang is a compiled language. It was designed by some guys at Google, basically designed to be a faster, safer kind of replacement for, I don't know, Java. I've never actually coded in Golang, but I do know that it has memory safety and it has a much more efficient garbage collection than Java as far as I'm aware, but it is used in a lot of networking and things like that. It's also meant to be pretty easy to write in Golang. So that's what it has going for it. It's easy to write, it's memory safe. And in terms of 
of jobs, Golang does have quite a few out there. And it's a modern language unlike uh, COBOL or PL1, and if you go on Stack Overflow, all the forums, you'll find lots of groups dedicated to Golang. I would say its downsides is it still uses a garbage collector and it's just not as uh, performant as another language such as Rust. And from what I've heard, it's it's a little bit lackluster in terms of how it is. And you get incremental improvements in certain areas compared to say Java, perhaps not enough to justify learning and implementing a whole new language that is maybe not as mature as, as a language like Java. All right, this brings us to number one. Yeah, number one is Rust. So Rust is a general purpose programming language designed to kind of be a replacement for, I don't know, C++ or to be more performant than something like Java. So talking about the pros, it has guaranteed safety, zero level abstraction, it's highly performant, and there's an amazing community around it. You'll find a lot of great programmers out there willing to help uh, in the Rust community. And it's rapidly growing. A lot of the big companies are using Rust at the moment. Some of the cons are it has a very steep learning curve. I mean, learning about memory management and all of these new concepts in Rust, such as lifetimes and ownership and things like that, takes a lot of time to get to grips with these concepts. Despite growing as a language and getting and improving in, in a lot of ways, a lot of the libraries are still lacking. They still haven't hit their stable point. I mean, if you're looking for things such as AI and stuff, there's still just not enough libraries out there to really make it an, um, an ease of use kind of thing. However, there are jobs out there. The blockchain community, for example, is using Rust in a lot of different areas. So definitely money to be made and jobs to be found. So yeah. So that's my top five list. If there's a language in there you don't agree with or something that you would have added, let me know. Uh, this is just my personal opinion on, on the top five obscure languages that will make you money. Um, if you think there's something in there missing, let me know. Leave it in the comments as well. Subscribe if you like this kind of content. Hit the like button, all that YouTube jazz. All right, see you guys.